In September 2002, a group of four, made of my beloved brother, his amazing girlfriend, and one of my dearest cousins, set out to hike the West Coast Trail on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. Given we had opted out of the bus service to get us to and from the trailheads, we used our day zero to stage a car at the finish in Pachina Bay near Bamfield. It turned out to be a very long day, driving on logging roads. So we all questioned our decision at the time, but in the end, we really loved having our car at the completion of our journey. We also chose to attend the orientation that day so we could get an early start the next morning. On day one, we were on the boat at 8.30 and started our trek with a rather steep ladder. The first of many to come. What you doing, Nancy? I'm climbing some stairs. Oh, are you? Those aren't stairs. My ladders. That's a ladder, yeah. West Coast Trail ladders. <laughs> oh yeah? Okay. Have fun. Thank you. We'll see you at the end. Okay. And you can't put up a fight in the misty light. <laughs> Our plan was to hike from mile marker 75 to 70 with an additional one kilometer to get us to the Thrasher Cove campground. Starting our journey northbound, we'd heard this section would be a difficult one, so we planned an easy six kilometer. Well, as it turned out, we did about 12 kilometer that day according to our tracking devices. We later learned from First Nation Guardians that the West Coast Trail 75 kilometer is a linear measure and not the usual hiking kilometer we were used to. At the time though, we thought, well, at least the hardest day is over, right? Well, not really. We found out each day forward would offer something different, but never any easier apart from the very last day of the trek. In the misty light. In the misty Pire journée. Je suis un peu fatiguée. <rire> Sérieusement. Ces échelles, cette trail m'a tué. C'est les dernières, là, je pense. Hein? Oui. Arriving at Thrasher's Cove. Day one. Thrasher Cove. Pretty close to the beach. Well, it's a good thing to know the tides. Everybody is pretty close to the ocean right now, but it's at its highest point. We set up our first camp and laughed at ourselves as we put up tarps for the first time on this trip. We knew this trail would provide likely rain and a short morning dew, so we thought it'd be a good idea to carry that tarp. We also brought with us a Swedish cloth 
and that proved to be an excellent idea. We would use it in the morning to wipe the dew off the tent fly. We fetched our water in the nearby creek and finally sat down to our first backpacker meal of the trip. We rested for a while, gazing at the waves, and they were coming so close to our tent. But we felt pretty sure we were safe. Soon after, rather fatigued, we all retired to our tent, content of our first day. On day two, we would go from Thrasher Cove to Camp Bay via Owens Point. We were all very excited that the tides were in our favor, meaning we would have low tides in the morning and we would have the choice to use the beach route instead of the forest one. But this beach walk was not an easy beach walk. We were presented with an obstacle course of huge boulders, slippery wet rocks, immense washed up tree logs, which all had to be scrambled. We had to strategize the entire way for every single step and keep in mind the tide that was coming in too. to Owens Point just in time to take a few photos but we could not linger too long as the path to the other side was a climb over a rock ledge and we could see the water coming in already. So we took our packs off and helped each other over the ledge to continue on the other side. Once past Owens Point we would enjoy a splendid ocean view for a while, which was a really welcome reprieve from the boulders. But soon after, surge channels would present themselves. Again, we were fortunate as tides were not too high, and crossing them was definitely not as bad as they could have been. Finally, we sat down to a well-deserved break before leaving the beach to return to the forest trail. finally got into Camp Bruce Bay after another arduous 12 kilometer. I was able to get cell network and as rain was in the forecast we decided to set up tarps again. After bathing in the creek and a lovely meal, we made plans for our next day and went to sleep. On day 3, we woke up to rain and it proved to be a very long and difficult day. The trail would be in the forest all the way and would be a muddy obstacle course with so many wet and slippery ladders. We walked in the woods for nearly 10 hours and even though the day tested our physical and mental toughness, we kept our spirits up singing and joking. And this
this is how this is how you embrace the sock. Right? Et on est assis en cette belle journée. Un petit break. En train Allô, voilà. de. En train de regarder la belle vue. Les pieds sont encore au sec. Regardez-nous ça, les pieds. Oh boy! C'est ça, là. Il y a de l'eau partout. Oh, mud. Ah! Bon. Il faut juste trouver les bâtons. <rire> Jump right in, Nancy, for the camera. <laughs> oh, palaya! <laughs> this is crazy! Well, it gets a lot drier, I guess, eh? Huh? It gets a lot drier as we go. <laughs> hmm. What do you think, Nance? Right just there. just like the Appalachian Trail. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Just well. Uh oh, oh, oh. <laughs> She's trying to find a drier route. I don't think it's working. <laughs> Luckily, the rain stopped as we came into Walbram Creek to set up our camp for the night. Alas, with the very little sunlight left, we could not dry any of our wet clothes, but we were treated with a superb sunset. We took the time to chat with other hikers who were headed south to see what was coming our way the next day. Whatever it was, we would be ready. On day four, we would head to Cribs Creek. With a favorable low tide in the early morning, we decided to take the beach route again. But first, we would need to cross Walban Creek, which meant taking our boots off, as the flow was considerable and we did not want to start our march with wet boots. For some reason, two of us thought it would be a great idea to take the cable car and the shortcut showed on the West Coast Trail map. Unfortunately, we found the trail was abandoned and after a little bushwalking, we had to turn back. With all that, we had lost about over an hour. In the end, we took our boots off, crossed the creek and walked as fast as we could to join the other two, which we eventually did. We still were able to cross Vancouver Point in time before the tides was too high. And we also were able to stop at Bonilla Point to enjoy the falls and a food break. After that, we continued on beautiful Kermana Beach and the Kermana Lighthouse. We enjoyed the day free of rain, even if a little foggy. Soon, we had to forge another creek, so the boots came off one more time. On the other side, we decided to continue barefoot in the sand for a little while. That was a nice feeling. Not too long after, we arrived at Cribs Creek, some 8 hours and 36,000 steps later. We set up our tents and made plans for what we were going to do next. We were going to get up at 5 a.m. the next day to take the preferred beach route and avoid what other hikers had described to us as a grueling, 
bushwalking two kilometer. The beach route seemed like the better option. Day five would be Cribs Creek to Tosia Falls. We found out from the prior days that it would take us a couple of hours to leisurely break down in the morning and be ready to hit the trail. So as we needed to be hiking out of Cribs at 6.30, we challenged ourselves with that 5 a.m. wake-up call and to simply skip breakfast that morning. We could get breakfast once we passed Dare Point. Point which would only be passable at a low tide below 2.1 meter. Plugging away here at Dare Point. After Dare Point, we headed back into the woods for just a small detour and then were able to get back to the beach all the way to the beautiful Chiwet River. We all love that beach. It truly was gorgeous. But don't think we weren't working hard. Try walking in sinking sand with a 30 or 40 pound pack. <laughs> really, it wasn't easy. Finally, after four and a half hour of walking, we arrived at the crab shack. We were so happy. Freshly caught salmon, crab, and of course, a beverage. The sun was shining and it was just so wonderful. We got to camp at around 6 p.m., delighted with our day and thankful for our feet and our buddies that were serving us well so far. Injury free. To see at falls were beautiful and we definitely took advantage of them. We were so glad to bathe our aching muscles in the very cold water. But then we would have to quickly hurry up and put warm clothes on. As soon as the sun was down with the ocean winds, it was definitely feeling colder very quickly. We watched another amazing sunset and felt so thankful it wasn't raining. Another great day. On day six, the plan was to originally hike all the way to Michigan Beach, which is what most of the northbound hikers would do as they needed to catch a bus at Panchina Bay. But we didn't need to catch a bus, so the suggestion was that we would go to Tsukawas instead. It sounded like a good idea, so we decided to do that. It would make it for a shorter day and a shorter day sounded absolutely splendid. So we headed out of camp that morning for an easy day. Well, easy to compare to all the other days we've done so far. Instead of the planned 17 kilometer, we would have about 8k and be at camp hopefully around 1.30 to enjoy the afternoon in the sun. The route would be mostly beach with some wood trails but it would be stunning views all the way. Our next campsite. We got to Tsukawa's beach and there were no one else there. Wow, that was amazing. First time we were first, that was a nice change too. We had the pick of the sights and we truly found a gem. Someone had made a table and bench of driftwoods 
and they were all sorts of hanging art from stones and shells, etc. We felt like we were on a deserted island. We enjoyed ourselves and even celebrated with a little libation we carried with us from the beginning. We were nearly done. One last day. our last day all the way to Pachina Bay. It would be a 17 kilometer day which took us about six and a half hours. The trail was beautiful and way easier than any other day. We would stop along the way at Seal Rock and arrived at Pachina Bay, the end of the West Coast Trail. We were all a little giddy and truly elated by our accomplishments. Last kilometer in the West Coast Trail. Good job, team! <laughs> We were lucky it was Thursday and Kevin Peters from one of the First Nations was still there with freshly cooked salmon that he graciously shared with us. It was so good, just like our victory. Looking for.